Okay, so today we are going to move from Cargo Watch, which I've been using a lot, to Bacon. And those allows you to run cargo commands in a watch mode. And the reason why I'm moving out of Cargo Watch is because the developer, and big thanks to the developer, but is putting this crate in a live support, which is completely fine. And then he recommends us to either look at Watch Exec, which I've been using as well, and it's great, or Bacon. But if we go to Watch Exec, we're going to realize that this one is also on hold. So we're going to look at the bacon, this one, and it's actually an awesome one. So if we go down here, the way that we're going to install that is just with a cargo install, bacon, and you put the dash dash locked to make sure that you use the same dependencies that has been published into the crate. And then we just use bacon like that, and then we can do the test and run and everything. So that's pretty cool. And then there's many other things also that we can do, but we're going to use it like that. So what I like to do is usually if we have a crate like that, and this is my XP pattern. So it's a previous video that we did on Rust and Lua. And the way that I like to learn is this pattern here where I have my examples as examples files. So like this, I can learn step by step. And usually what I do when I learn is I do a cargo watch.clear.quiet.execute and then I do a run and then example and then the C01, simple. So that will give me this. And when I change things over there, that will update it. And obviously I have a shell alias, such as I don't have to type this all the time. I do cargo watch E, C01, simple. And that will run that. So we're going to do the same thing with now bacon. So the first thing you do is you do a cargo install dash dash locked to have the same dependencies as it's been published, bacon. That will install bacon, I already installed it. And then we're going to do a bacon run dash 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 quiet. So I like the things quiet, example, and C01, simple. And the way it works is you have a little uh, mini app, a clear application. So that is the top here that tells you what you have been running. That will be your content that you can scroll. And that is a bottom bar that we can see over there below that. And we can do the quit, W, or H for help. So if I press H here, I have these kind of things. And then when we change this, that will run like that. So that is actually very cool. And then obviously you guessed it because I don't like to type. I like to code. I have a little shell function that I did myself. P-R-E, bacon run example. And then C01 dash simple. And then it runs like that. And then you can also have things here in the uh, bacon to ml and everything to have shortcut, but those are per project. The things I like about my alias is across projects. So both are complementary in a way. So that is a good example here for the run example or the run domain if you want. And that works beautifully. And now we're going to see how it works as well for testing in a real crate. So now if I do a real crate, so that is my Rust Gen AI, which is the thing that I'm using in Dev AI to talk to any AI providers. So there's quite a bit of source over there. And I have my integration test over there. Now, the way that I organize that, and usually I don't do that, but for this crate is appropriate, is I organize them by providers. So I have Entropy, Cohere, Gemini, Grow, Colama, OpenAI, and XAI. And some of them here are pointing to this one, but often there's a little variance. So that's why I separate them. And then within all my tests, I have the test chat simple, and then I call the common test. But the pattern that we're going to see is regardless of that. The things that I like to do a lot when I do testing or developing actually, regardless if it's inside my source as unit test or integration test, I often do a cargo watch test and then I give a function name. And sometime in this case, if I want to test only um, this file, for example, and only the chat for OpenAI, I will do a dash dash test, 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 open AI and then I will test this one and the way that I'm organizing my test function is I try to group them like that such as if I want I can test them by group this way and by the way the way that cargo watch works here is just watch a cargo command so if you do this this is a way that you do a one shot so the way we will do that with bacon will be a bacon test dash dash and I could just put that name 
over there or the beginning of it if I wanted to test all of those. And that in my model here will test all of those files. And usually I work one by one. So I will do the same thing with cargo test, which is a test, test P, open AI. And then I will put my simple chat, press enter. And now I have this nice little things. If we do a dash quiet on the test, we'll lose uh, what we're testing. So it's not very nice. So this is good enough. So that's pretty cool. Now, usually when I do this kind of test during my production development, I like to test one thing at a time. And often I have debug prints like that, where I'm going to print something and I can iterate very fast and so on. And then when I press save, we have a nice little flash and then we have the value. The problem here is that we realize that it didn't print anything because we didn't have the dash dash no capture. But there's a little trick. If we press quit and then we put back our command over there, this one, then what we think we could do is a no capture like that. But that wouldn't work. In fact, what we need is to do another dash dash. There's a reason for that because the dash dash is, needs to be added after. It doesn't really matter. We just add it. And now, boom, it works very nicely. And so the cool thing here is usually I wouldn't do that there. Press save, refresh it. Then I will go somewhere at the chat res and I will probably put chat res question mark. And then I can iterate fast like that. See what I have. It is what I want or whatever. And then when I fix the bug, I remove my debug print. The reason why I have that is because I can do a search and make sure that I don't miss anything. So I always have this. And then you guessed it, because I do not like to type, I have a little one here, a little script, and I do a B bacon test. And now if I only put one name, for example, this one, I can do that. And that will test everything that starts with that, like a cargo test. But in this little script, as we can see, I can do as well two names. And in this case, I will assume that the first one is a file. So that is just the way I coded the script. You can do it the way you want, obviously, open AI, and then this one. And then I press enter, and that will run the thing and then I have everything and I fix the bugs over there and then once I fix the bug remove everything do a last one to make sure everything works fine do a quit and then I do a cargo test to make sure that everything works fine I do a search with my thing over there and then I do a commit and then a push and that's my process okay so that was just a video to say that bacon is awesome they have a pretty cool website as well over there where you have a good introduction and then you have the config cookbook and the cookbook is very well done so anyway big thanks to cargo wash developer that was awesome and bacon is amazing big thanks until next one happy coding